Good morning, everyone. For Telesur, I'm Cody Weddle in Caracas, Venezuela. We start off in the United States where the U.S. Congress has taken a further step in support of the new military offensive against the Islamic State. Congress approved a new bill Wednesday to arm and train Syrian rebels to fight the Islamic State in Syria. Training for Syrian rebels will be carried out through December. Despite support from both Republican and Democratic lawmakers, a significant number of congressmen opposed the new measure. It passed with a 273 to 156 vote. During the vote, some expressed concern that U.S. weapons and supplies could eventually end up in the hands of the Islamic State or similar groups. Among other military equipment, the Islamic State is currently using U.S. armored vehicles. This is ISIS propaganda that was on the internet. This is American tank now in the possession of ISIS when the Iraqis cut and ran. This is a Humvee going through a parade. Also, four Humvees that apparently have never been used that are now in the possession of ISIS when the Iraqis cut and ran. The Iranian government, a longtime opponent of ISIS, has criticized the strategy to tackle the terrorist group. Iran was not included in the conference held in Paris earlier this week. Addressing the Council of Foreign Affairs, Iran's foreign minister pointed out that U.S. allies helped build the ter terror group. And while Iran was not invited to Paris, uh, which I would call a coalition of repenters, because <laughs> mo mo most, most participants in that, in that meeting in one form or another provided support to ISIS, uh, in the course of its creation and, and upbringing and, and expansion, uh, a, actually at the end of the day, creating a Frankenstein that uh, came to hunt its creators. To Latin America now and Colombia, where Senator Ivan Cepeda used a special parliamentary debate to expose links between former President Alvaro Uribe and paramilitary forces. Cepeda also revealed links between Uribe and infamous drug lord Pablo Escobar. Although Uribe denied the accusations, he admitted receiving money from paramilitary forces deeply linked to drug cartels. Human rights organizations are calling for Uribe to face trial. And to Ecuador, where President Rafael Correa held a rally on Wednesday in a show of strength against opponents he has accused of seeking destabilization. Thousands gathered outside the presidential palace. The rally was organized by the government in response to opposition forces which were protesting against an upcoming work law proposal. The new work law will extend workers' strike rights, social benefits, and salaries. Anti-government protesters turned violent when police stepped in to prevent clashes between the two sides. To Venezuela, where a second video has been released providing more details into a terror plot in Venezuela aimed at destabilizing the government. Here's our correspondent here in Caracas, Rachel Boothroyd. It was a video which shook the country, said Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro, describing the footage released earlier this week, which revealed a terrorist plot against his government, planned by right-wing extremists Lorenz Saleh and Gabriel Vallas. Now, a second video has emerged providing shocking details surrounding the existence of an intricate terrorist network organized specifically to bring down the Venezuelan government at any cost. Everything's going to be done in San Cristobal, bro. The local government building, the other thing, bam, bam, bam. They'll get the team right out of San Cristobal and get them here to Colombia to lay low for two months. The video appears to have been filmed during the violent barricades which took hold of the country in February this year and which were widely publicized as spontaneous uprisings by the international media. Reports which now seem to be far removed from the truth. Listen to me. What is happening here at the border is no accident, jerk. Brother, here things are really heating up. In the footage, a laughing Saleh can be heard giving details of plans to blow up a series of buildings in the border city of San Cristobal, including a public bank. He also threatens to carry out what he describes as a social cleansing of the grassroots movements which support Venezuela's socialist government. 
language which for many Venezuelans brings to mind images of the paramilitary violence of neighboring Colombia. They had a whole logistical support structure behind them directed from Cucuta all to support these two young men which were sending people, as he himself says, to gather them together, train them, even in firing weapons and parachuting. Then they were sent back to carry out these actions in Venezuela. The two men had managed to acquire explosives known as C4 in order to carry out the attack. The same type of explosives used to blow up diplomatic buildings in Caracas in February 2003. According to the government, the men had planned to carry out the bombings this coming October. Rachel Boothroyd for Telesur in Caracas, Venezuela. And thanks to Rachel for that report. Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko is visiting North America as Ukraine continues to camp its campaign to join the Western Military Alliance, NATO. The president met his Canadian counterpart and was greeted by the Canadian Senate on Wednesday. He will meet U.S. President Barack Obama on Thursday at the White House. The Ukrainian president hopes to secure military and financial aid from Washington. Meanwhile, limited fighting has been reported in eastern Ukraine where shelling killed 12 on Wednesday. Whistleblower Edward Snowden has released new documents showing that the U.S. government is supplying Israel with intelligence on U.S. citizens. The U.S. intelligence involves civilians who have relatives in the Palestinian territories. Israeli intelligence officers say the material is used to blackmail Palestinians. Snowden calls it the biggest abuse he has seen so far. And Scotland is due to vote on Thursday on whether or not it wants independence from the United Kingdom. Four final polls showed the no campaign ahead by 4%. But with hundreds of thousands of voters still undecided, pro-independence activists believe their side could still win. We expect to have results by the end of Thursday. Plenty more on those stories and others at our website, telesurtv.net slash English for Telesur English. I'm Cody Weddle. Have a great day.